Bill, this is Brian Dodge. Hi. Hi, Brian. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And you've got to be Andy, Andy Martin. Andy Martin. Okay. All right. So we got that. Uh, I I put a draft agenda which included all of two things, uh, which were to elect the chairman and have a general discussion and oh the three things and set up next meeting date. Uh, and um, you can do with that what you what you wish um, you have a list of requests from the selectmen to work with um, I suggested that you elect the chairman just so that somebody could control a discussion and you know mm -hmm. uh, keep things moving along if necessary or what, whatever you feel like you need so um, if you want to go that route if you want to uh, if you if you want to try and do it without you're welcome to do that too but um, I think it's probably a good idea to have somebody just be the one. Uh, and, uh, and then you can talk about where you want to go from there. So. Um, I nominate Skip to be chairperson. <laughs> that was pretty quick. I, with a sigh of relief, I will say I second that <laughs> and move that nominations close. <laughs> Any other interest? Any other suggestions? Any objections? I did bring it up, though. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The chair is yours. All righty. All righty. So Chris provided a package to us. I don't know why my printer prints email so large, but anyway. Um, and provided an attachment with various parts to it. Does everybody have copies? Yes. Yes. I did make copies of 35B1, which is listed in the. The, uh, the, 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 the Warren article that started the thing off. No, I don't think do that. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, it's there. All right. Um, we're a committee. We were created uh, by the selectmen, so we go by the public meeting rules and that kind of stuff. Good list of things to have. I don't think I've ever had that before, but that's good to have. Um, all right. Bill, you have a question? I, 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 I have something to say. I, you sure. have something to say. Go for it. Um, I, I would just like to point out that the posting of this meeting was done on the town website um, as of yesterday afternoon and was also posted on the uh, town bulletin board. So I would interpret that to mean that we are legal. All right. Anybody know if that's true? Yes. yes. Those are the two places. Okay. Probably also both of the post offices. It was not posted in West Nottingham. Wasn't okay. No, it went to the other one. Wasn't sure of West. Um. All right. I. I people sign up for meetings, for committees, for various reasons. Um, does anybody want to provide information as perhaps why they felt like signing up for this one? Um, I can start if you want. Um, I gave a little bit at town meeting, but 
Um, anybody else wants to go first? They may. <laughs> I personally think um, that there needs to be more rigidity um, to the processes that um, that presently exist um, so the consistency can be uh, at least measured or performed um, as we go through time and personnel change. Um, I, I never really had a good feeling as to how the Recreation Revolving Fund um, was working itself through the process. Not that it was bad or good, it just I didn't have a warm fuzzy as to how it worked. So at town meeting I was a little frustrated with the fact that it appeared there was some inner workings that were going on that may not have necessarily jived with the way I thought things should have gone. So that's why I raised the issue at town meeting. Um, that doesn't mean it was good or bad, it just seemed a little strange to me. Um, so that's why I asked for this, that's why I signed up for the committee. Um, I hope what we can produce here is a, <clears throat> a list of, if you will, what is recreation, um, how uh, the funds come and go, how the uh, general fund is involved in the way in which these things go, um, that kind of stuff. That's my personal thing. Anybody have others? <laughs> Dee? I believe that if you um, are going to raise questions about issues, um, then you need to not just be, you need to be part of the solution. And I've asked questions about the Rec Revolving Fund specifically over the last number of years um, and never really, I understood the, the, the concept of it, but the background of it I didn't understand and um, what the ultimate goal for that money was to be was left rather unclear. Yes, different people, you got different answers. Um, I think we have a fabulous rec department. My daughter went through it. She, you know, loved every minute of it. Um, I think that there are some things that need to um, possibly be streamlined and made so that things happen consistently across the board. Um, and I just, I feel like if I'm gonna complain and ask questions about something, then I better show up to meetings. Anyone else? Um, Don't have to. <laughs> no, uh, I'm new to the town. I've only been here a little over a year. Um, I, my wife and I just bought a house here in town. Um, so I was looking for a way to get engaged in the town and one of the selectmen had mentioned this to me. So I thought it was a good chance to lend my voice to the town. So. Cool. Good? You good? Uh, I mean, I'm similar position, new to um, as far as, as Nottingham local government and have some of the same questions uh interested in finding out more okay cool. and i would sort of echo what d has said i i haven't really raised a lot of questions at meetings or whatever um, but um i i've sort of been in, intrigued uh, I, I guess I've seen some changes in, I don't know how to, how to word this. Initially, when this warrant article was presented to the town, it was explained as being an opportunity, a, a, a vehicle to set up seed money to try recreation programs um, to see if they were popular or whatever, uh, to see if they would fly. Um, that, uh, over the years, has been echoed 
uh, by people in the town hall. And then when I read what the law says, um, I discover that um, the word accumulate is in there, and there's an intent to accumulate. And I know that in Nottingham, in terms of some of the history, at the time that we took over the Marston property by tax deed, um, there was, there evolved a sense that that might be used for recreation, uh, and I'll mention the, the word ball fields. And so I know that uh, my, my sense is that um, some of the accumulation of money in said fund um, was sort of, I won't say earmarked, but the, the, the intent was that perhaps this sum of money could be used in the development of ball fields at the Marston property. And lo and behold, when you, you know, when you look at the statutes and so on and so forth, that seems to be an appropriate use. It doesn't have to revolve in and out on a regular basis, if you will. Um, can I ask a, a question or a favor? Sure. Um, being new to the town and, and kind of new to this whole uh, issue, uh, Bill, you seem to have a long history of knowledge of this issue. Um, you talked about when the when the RSA was first put in place, when the when the revolving fund was, was put, in, first put in put in, place. Put in yeah. it was it was intended to see what if people wanted to engage in recreational activities. So I guess I, I guess what I'm asking for is, can we have a little bit of a history? If you whoever has the history or, or knowledge of what the original intent was, um, was and where we've come to, where we've come to, my reading of this is is that. The, the recreational fund is not to be used as a quote unquote capital reserve fund f to say, well, we want to build ball fields. We'll just pile money in here until we get enough to do that. Um, my reading of this is that that would be an unacceptable use of that money, where if it's done intentionally through planned intake of funds for that, if the money is just coming in and then one day they're like, hey, we really want ball fields and we had the money for it then that's not a planned capital reserve fund for that money, and thus would be acceptable, I guess, is my understanding of reading it. I actually had the, came up with the exact same question um, when I was reading through everything. In fact, I asked Chris for some additional parts of the RSA trying to figure out if I could get that clarified. Um, because, and, and let, me, let me ask a question first, and Janet, I don't know if you have this number, this answer or not. What year was this? Was the Ward article voted on? 1994. Yep. 1994. Oh, it says it right there. God, I need more coffee. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that was so that was before us because we moved here in '96. Um, the the way I read some of the stuff that Chris sent out was that. the revolving fund was not a place to um, to take place of a, a, a capital reserve fund. But in fact, it kind of looks the way it's written as that was in fact the intent was, oh, well, let's rather than do the capital reserve fund and take it from the regular taxes and, and do it as a Warren article this way, we'll just take all the money that's left over and put it in a fund and let it sit there and accumulate until we get to the point where we, we find a piece of land that we want to buy and, and develop something. It, it is not a capital reserve fund. No, I understand capital, it is not. And a capital reserve fund is established specifically for a specific purpose by the voters and the voters have to uh, approve the monies coming out of this. The Rec Revolving Fund is not specific 
and does not need the approval of the voters to come out. And the literature that that we got was that um, said very specifically that it was not. And I certainly did not mean to imply that those funds are now designated for that, okay? And I was very careful. I guess, I guess this is why I was bringing it up because okay. I want to make sure that the, any the, confusion is, no, that is cleared they, up. Those funds are not designated for anything as nearly as I can tell at the present time. Um, th there has been a, an opinion for the sake of argument, okay? that that money could be used for that development at the Marston property. Okay. For a recreation can I, facility. Can I stop you there for a second and, and, and read something? Because what this says is to raise and appropriate such sums as are necessary to pay for lands or other recreational purposes as described in RSA 35B1, by depositing fees and charges for rec parks, services, and facilities into a rec resolving fund. Correct. So to me, that says the purpose of whoever wrote this was to build up a fund of money with the specific purpose of buying land and building a facility. What you'll find is those words are exactly the same as the RSA for 35B1. And typically, that's the way Warren articles are created. They copy the words right out of that. Okay. That article. Okay. So, I'm not going to tell you that the people that created this Warren article at the beginning ever thought anything about land being purchased. The again, the way it was told to us, which made sense, I believe, to most of us in the room, that. Um, that it was a fund that was going to be created, which is to uh, raise and appropriate, uh, I think it was $40,000, in order to start a fund that allowed the capability for the recreation director to start more, uh, to, to start and develop more recreational opportunities for in-town scenarios. For instance, um, well, I don't know, you, you, you can't start a recreation program of, like soccer without goals and some cones or something and markers and balls and all that kind of stuff. So that would be the, that would be the place where the seed money comes from to start a soccer program. If you want to have teachers or, um, I shouldn't say teachers, but uh, coaches. coaches, coaches, yeah, refs uh, to be paid or, or refs to be paid or uh, training opportunities to exist. That's what that fund was for. Now at the same time, typically those programs, at least the way we envisioned it, those programs would have fees associated with them for anyone that partook and those fees would go back into the fund and therefore that would be the revolving fund. And Sorry, yep. F so. forgive my ignorance, are there fees attached to those programs? the soccer program or whatever programs are there, there are fees? Okay. There are fees that exist for uh, various programs that are run by their recreation okay. department. All right, thank you. Um, which, which is again part of the problem that we're going to try and work our way through here is if you get fees for a program, does that mean the program initial funds need to come out of rec revolving? Those are the kinds of questions I think I'm looking for answers for and some of that kind of stuff. Um, if if you don't put money in to the program from a to the fund from a various from a particular program that is considered recreation for whatever reason, uh, can you take monies out? Again, that's not in the RSAs or anything else. I hope to nail those types of things down so that it's it's a a much more cohesive process. Mm -hmm. um, I do not believe that there was an intent to um, dump funds into it. Um, I, I don't believe there was any sort of a mechanism that exists at the beginning to look at purchasing land. 
but I do think that property uh, um, uh, recreational components balls you know all that kind of stuff was the types of things that would have to be purchased at least one time for a particular program that was going to be offered um, I don't know how long the balls will last, but it could be, you know, a couple of seasons, <laughs> that type of thing. But any balls were needed or necessary. So from a from a standpoint of background for our next meeting, what types of background information could we get that would help us through this? You think the meeting minutes from 1994? The town meeting minutes? Town meeting I minutes. got them. You got them? Do they say much? Well, um, to help. <laughs> the the only thing that is of interest in light of where we're at is that there was a motion made by Earl Rourke and seconded by Jerry Hume. Uh, And and I, I'm not sure that I understand it, but um, uh, it says depositing fees and charges in excess of nine thousand dollars. And I take that to mean that if the recreation department took in nine thousand and one dollar over the course of the year the one dollar would go in. That motion would, would was go, go into the revolving fund. Okay. okay. That okay. motion was defeated. Okay. So we are left with the language of the statute which says that basically all All revenue from such fees and charges may be deposited. Okay, they don't have to be, uh, and and I think that is perhaps a worthwhile question to raise. How is that decision made? What fees go in and what fees don't? Uh, and the fees that don't, where do they go? Okay. Um, it's a good question. Huh? It's good, a good question. Yeah. Uh, you obviously have a copy of that. We can make copies for everybody. Or I did not. No, no. I, no <laughs> we can make copies of that. Yes, we can. Okay. okay. So that everyone can see it. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just so so you guys are questioning whether the intent was to create a revolving fund versus a. Um, special fund let's see the, the idea of a capital reserve fund is kind of the concept that was presented and this is not doesn't follow any of the normal rules and regulations associated with capital reserve funds but correct it, I mean, it, it looks pretty clear that they wanted a recreation revolving fund correct as defined correct. by the statute yes correct. okay yeah so, but correct me if I'm wrong, as you said before, a capital reserve fund is something that is specifically designated to, rate, to set aside monies for a specific item. Fire truck. Correct. Fire truck, Fire police car, uh, new building, whatever. Boom. Yeah. Done. Yeah. The revolving rec fund is to put the monies from fees and charges or whatever else that is being used in, in that are being taken in by people using the rec department into this revolving fund basically a uh, rainy day fund for the rec department to say well we want to start a soccer program we want to start a volleyball program we need seed money we need seed money um, we take in a bunch of stuff we didn't start any new programs over the last six years well we have a bunch of money uh, let's make a ball field so that's or it well I, I guess the way I would say so nowhere in there, or, nowhere in there did or, they say it's for a ball field. It's for oh, the absolutely not. Correct. Yeah, correct. it's it it comes kind of organically as far as uh, exactly. we want this, we want that for recreational exactly. purposes. It it may revolve mm -hmm. in and out in its entirety. It may accumulate until there is a 
request to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how but that's by, how I understand by the recreation its, its abilities to the selectmen and the selectmen approve it. So it's not just right. I mean, okay, so right, 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 right. so we're kind of right. at a place that I have a question for Chris um, because Chris put in the general notes. Um, Nottingham does not have a recreation commission, so responsibility and authorities mentioned in the New Hampshire Municipal, Municipal Association article lie with the Board of Selectmen. So in some places it says the select board or this recreation commission has the authority to spend the money when they decide, but in other places it says that the rec director has the authority to spend the money um, you know, to, to, to request that the, the select board spend the money. So where does the information that the rec commission is, or the board of selectmen are the, the rec commission because we don't have one? You've just Law. identified the elephant in the room. <laughs> Delib the, quite deliberately. The law, the, the law says I, I, something to the effect of the authority to spend lies with the Recreation Commission or the governing body in the absence of a, a Recreation Commission. The governing body I don't recall seeing any, anywhere in there where it said it's to the power of the rec director. It was always the Recreation Commission. Um, when there is no Recreation Commission, it falls to the power of the select board. Well, it, it comes from the actual... Warrant, warrant article uh, that yes. says the warrant article, which is what the voters approved. If so to me, that would say that they're giving the power to. If you have a rec committee, then the rec director. If you do not have either of those, it would <coughs> refer back to the selectmen. Even so it's kind of like they opened it up in case they had these things one day, well, which we don't. Th this is pretty clear, and we still have what we have. We have a recreation director, and we have a board of selectmen. Who's the recreation director? Is that Janet? That's Janet. It to be Janet at okay. the moment. So right now, she makes the decision on the expenditure, and then it gets approved by the Board of Selectmen? In practice, we, we have kind of a, 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 I guess I'd call it a historical body of practice where we've identified costs that typically are, come from the Rec Revolving Fund. Anything outside of that typical purchase or larger purchases usually gets blessed by the board of selectmen but the something like the payroll for the summer camp there's long been a rec revolving kind of expense we don't dollar for dollar have the selectmen approve that is that, is that a fair assessment of where we are you, you have a lot of latitude in which goes to which but it's, it's built on a lot of history of what goes where Mostly. I mean, over the course of time, I haven't been given any, um, I wouldn't say any, I haven't been given too much um, uh, control. I, I haven't, um, the Board of Selectmen has not said to me what I should or should not do. I've made up things where anything over $500 or so that I don't feel comfortable making that decision. I will check with the board of selectmen. Definitely anything over a thousand or three thousand dollars. Always, I send a memo first before I would ever buy it. And um, the van, for example, was twenty-three thousand dollars. That was a memo several months in advance and a lot of conversation before we ever went and purchased it. So depending on, you know, just along the way, I've sort of. You know, if it's a couple hundred dollars, then and it's needed for the specific program, then I have um, the latitude to do that. Um, but when it gets to a $500 expense, then it was kind of like, okay, let me just run this by them, um, preferably before I, I spend the money. What's the cutoff point, Janet? The cutoff point for? Well, you mentioned 200 and 500. Okay, if it's over 200. If it's less than 500 and it's and it's a directly a thing that's specifically for like buying soccer balls or um, something that traditionally has been done 
you know, yes, if, if I you don't wanted ever, to do something that was entirely different and it was four hundred dollars, I would probably run it by past Chris. And you're saying these are all self-imposed restrictions? Yep. But at what point does the board of selectmen give you approval? Um, on the bigger, bigger expenses, um, on things like um, the, the van, van and. Um, we bought $3,000 in martial arts mats. Those things were uh, approved ahead of time, or they told ahead of time. Other things like soccer balls, um, the, I purchased them and the, the bill goes through to the Board of Selectmen. Certainly there's a, a point where they could say, we don't think you should be buying that, um, and I would not buy it the next time. I mean, but most of it has been along the way understanding from the boards of selectmen that have gone on over the course of time on what should be spent um, or any kind of you know if, if i were to go to betsy tomorrow okay one of the expenditures from this year is salaries for twenty six thousand five dollars and four cents and those were those were all given, sorry, those were given, those salary amounts would, were given. Would there be, what kind of documentation would there be that the selectmen have approved that? Is the, that done verbally? Is that done in writing? That's a memo that I give. No, no. No, no. When they give it back to you. No. I'm not talking about what you give to the selectmen. I'm talking about what the selectmen give to the bookkeeper to write the checks. I'll get to that in a minute. The there's no specific for the on the revolvers on the operating side. It's clear where all that comes no, from. We're only where about the revolving. The side? revolving side. Uh, there's a there's a rate setting for the uh, employees that goes before them, but I don't think there's an aggregate. There's no aggregate, you know, this is what the payroll spending number is for rec revolving for any given period of time. Just there's there's just a, a, a practice and an understanding of these programs go to this fund and that's where the It's not associated with the fee collected. That's why we're here. Okay. Um so let me ask the question again. What kind of evidence is given to Betsy that the selectmen have approved at the direction of the, have approved removing this from the revolving fund? Because under the statute, the selectmen have to approve it. The selectmen sign the checks. So that's, that's approval in one sense. But it, uh, but it, but it's supposed to be by the direction of the recreation. Well, I'm, I'm not there yet. Okay, but, but one selectman signs the check. Okay. Can I ask you a clarifying question, Bill? So, are you asking when they're sitting in a selectman meeting and they say, "Yep, we're going to pay five hundred dollars for soccer balls, take it out of the revolving fund, you're good to go." How does that information get from this meeting to the bookkeeper who actually cuts the check? Right. What is, is there, there a piece for of is documentation there... that the selectmen have approved okay. that? Do they send them a note? Do they send them an email? Do they phone call? Is they... it done verbally? Okay, I'm not. I'm not trying to point fingers here. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to ask how the system works. And um, the check signing is one selectman. Okay, so you got it's, one vote out of three. Yeah, no, it's it's loose. It's 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 based okay. on what have we done historically? Um, but they see you know, all the bills. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they see all they see the manifest. I, and all those I'm not so. like. Do, not, question, not do you go to the person who cuts the check and say, "Yep, they approved my five hundred dollars," and she writes you a check? Well, that's my ne that's my next point. Like, I think that's what he's getting is, at. How do, how does the person who cuts no. the check find out it's legit? And then. What documentation is there from the rec director to the selectman that she is directing this money to be Requesting removed? that money be removed. Yeah, well, I, I'm trying to use the word in the statute. But it sounds like she sends them a memo. 
I send them a memo for salaries and give them the rates of pay if they need you know an approximate amount for every person we can provide that I thought that this year we did um, I know I did a budget for the camp I don't I think that you saw it I don't remember for sure but I'm pretty sure you saw that so that would have an approximate amount for each employee um, it all depends on how many hours they work so come do you do the by, do you do the for that by bills. email or by by physical physical memo physical memo okay so I for every person that I'm hiring and actually in the last couple of years I put last year's salary and this year's salary and any justification for additional money are those memos read to the selectmen does it go into the official record that way they're given to the selectmen. yeah they, they get a copy of it they they they, 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 they get, approve any of the rate changes they get so a, they get a manifest correct of expenditures to be approved yeah. and they vote to approve the manifest yes that's after the fact after the the step that you describe of the cutting of the check and everything okay. in practice that actually okay. lags the all right, that, that is lasts, there but in approving a manifest, you're, you're approving, approving that the check, you're allowing the check to go out. Yes, if if you will. Yes. Prior to that. Prior to that, there's no formal step. Yeah. You know, there is there is no formal no. step. Okay. This? Just just like every other transaction that we do, you know, our department heads. I understand. Do all those things, so it's yeah. yeah. Can I? Ask, I just want some. Uh, interested in some background information about the fund I mean has it when did we start to have a surplus has it always had a surplus uh, are, are, you, are, are you saying uh, well, the fund was created in 1994 have we always run a surplus since that date or it started out as zero as far as I started know. at zero and then money was put in each year since then there were a couple years that we did not add money um, but we, we fed it with some money to begin with, correct? See, as far as I saw, we did not. But from that, the fees. There's uh, nothing in the warrant. Fees. There's, there's no dollar amount in the warrant. There's no capital in expenditure in the warrant article for the raising of money. When you it said 40000 before, I, I have never heard that before. That's what I thought we did. But I know that it started way less than that because I had documentation that started out, you know, like the first couple of years, it was like Six thousand, nine thousand. You know, the second. So you're year. not the original manager of the the that of the rec department. The there was somebody else doing it when this originally was voted on. Oh God, I don't remember. She's about the third or fourth person. I don't remember when you Am became the rec director. It What's seems like it's been just been always available. I didn't start till 1999. Okay. So the warrant article started in 1994. Okay. okay. I haven't, so I'm like these are all expenditures. A few years. But it, as well, far as I know, there was no money put into uh, it to start. Okay. No, because these are all revenues and expenditures. Revenues. We're, well, we're, in the, we're in the name of 140,000 right now. And expenditures. Okay. In revenues and expenditures yep. so in 2013. This one comes in. Yeah. But I'm looking. What's the total fund value? Right now, six. It went from zero to eighty. And has it has the history always been to just? I mean, it, it sounds like there's a budget created and it's just drawn from the fund. There's a rec budget created and then it's drawn out of that fund. All fees go into that fund, or there is a general fund and there's a revolving fund. So okay. the general fund is you know pays for some things um, and pays for some programs. But any of the programs that have fees attached to it um, are, for the most part, are in the record revolving. Um, this is a little piece of history for you. Um, somewhere around 2004, well, 2005, when I started as the rec director, and in many conversations since then, I have talked to the town administrator um, and board of selectmen over the years. But starting when I was started became the rec director, um, and questioning them on that the dollar amount was getting high, and we were, you know, looking at what to do and whether or not to make changes to the fund. Since I came in as rec director in 2005, and the the um, answer I've been given 
all along is that you know the Lee farm was a possibility and that's the Marston farm. the Marston Marston farm and that to leave the money and not worry about it and not make changes that they weren't going to make any changes and that um, so there has been a general understanding from on my part from the selectmen along the way since 2005 that um, they weren't I questioned them many times about putting in money into a trust fund or putting money into another type of a fund or establishing a capital reserve fund um, have had many many conversations over the years and um, because the RSA and anything else that is associated with this and any of the regulations that govern rec revolving funds do not say you cannot use it as a capital reserve fund or you cannot use it for capital purposes um, that's been the general consensus along the way now whether or not we change that is like I said I've been asking for that all along whether or not we decide to take a certain amount of money and set that aside for Marston and and um, and revise how we do this work this fund has been the question all along since we started accumulating somewhere since we were somewhere around 70,000 when it was kind of clear that and and some a lot of the money that accumulated in that fund um, it's kind of hard to explain we got a grant for twenty two thousand dollars a year for for many years for scholarships for kids so we took in 20 kids 30 kids I think at one time we had like 32 kids that had partial or full scholarships and the state gave us twenty two thousand dollars now the money goes into the camp and we spend money out and we have to hire you know more staff to handle that um, but it looks you know even though we're taking in that much money we didn't spend that much money out for additional staff so it did accumulate partly because of that grant that grant is gone now um, and we are not able to um, give as many scholarships we do um, take some kids in for free um, I think probably up till about seven or eight maybe instead of the 30 some odd that we used to but that was a large chunk of where a lot of that money kind of came from if I look back historically on it has it always been called the rec revolving fund or is it just the rec fund or rec revolving is yeah what it's been called. that that was established yeah. by the warrant article yeah I'm just and curious by, if yeah. it's Right. So it's your understanding that it started at zero, and now that I read this, I, I, I see that that's the way that's written, too. Um, I thought someplace along the line we had added monies to it, um, but this really doesn't allow for that to happen, so I'm guessing it did not. Well, the... But I always saw it as seed money, and so... Again, and that's, that's the way that it was explained originally and through a number of years and but but I think the seed money that was being discussed was that the fees that were charged would be going into that fund that would create that seed money and then the normal costs if you will that were being charged to the general fund quote unquote would not be charged at some point in time as that accumulated to that kind of a point hence the revolving again this is my own interpretation but reading this again it, it indicates that the fees is is what was driving the funds it's going called into this. revolving that's the title of it but the word accumulation is in there repeatedly but that's okay well I think uh, it's yeah yeah that that so, that refers to the year end exercise yeah. of, of flushing everything back to the unassigned fund balance as yeah. much as everything. Yeah. Where where yeah. every other uh, in, in the operating fund context, any unspent, you know, raised but unspent funds go back 
they accumulate in the sure. undesignated fund balance. And that, so that's that where that, be, yeah. that language refers to that mechanism yeah. as well but as it, it's growing. A, if, but if, this is exempt from that mechanism. Right. right. This can yeah. keep all It, it accumulates funds. independent of the unassigned uh, fund. Under, of the, yeah. Yes. Andy, are you getting better with that now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and uh, well, I'm, I'm also curious, but how in the past, it doesn't sound like, well, because when I, I look at the statute for the, for the revolving fund, um, it looks like the idea is that the fee associated with a program is supposed, it, it's set up so that you can start a program, budget what you think the program will be, for example, soccer, indoor soccer, you collect fees and your target is to meet that budget, not exceed and accumulate funds and hopefully not go below it. But it doesn't sound like we've been doing it that way. It sounds like the, all fees are thrown into one fund and then it doesn't even sound like the programs necessarily get charged to that fund. Let me ask, let me Every ask. Every program has a line within it so that if I need to go check and see like how much revenue has been brought in for soccer specifically yeah. and how much money has been spent out for soccer that you can it's it's all separated and if 1500 came in in and 2000 went out the 500 would come from the revolving fund it is right and yet if 2000 came in and 15 was spent 500 would stay in the revolving fund as as accumulation and would you say that it more often happens that there is extra money going to the accumulation rather than break even or fall short? Depends on the program. Um, the, the more popular programs, absolutely. The less popular programs, no. But we can continue to run less popular programs that are breaking even or losing money for a much longer period of time because the money is is there from right. you know like for example line dancing doesn't necessarily bring in too much money but there's a strong following of you know 12 to 15 people that come some come some week sometimes there's one there sometimes there's 10 there so we have been keeping that going for about three years now even though you know each year maybe we bring in either make sixty dollars or the next year we lose a hundred dollars so um you know some of the less popular programs can go on for longer but because of the because of the revol revolving fund you're allowed to have a wide variety of programming right. that right. wouldn't be allowed and if it was like started the biggest thing about revolving funds is that if you are going to start a program with the general fund you have to come up with the idea at the right time of the year. You got to plan for it in your budget. You got to put the money, you know, request the money in the budget, wait until March, get it approved, start the program. And then, um, so it gives you the flexibility to start programs at any time of the year. And in, so a, good, in a good process, that will probably be six months. And then you have to wait to see if it was approved. The, the Out of the general fund? Sometimes some programs could, at town meeting. Uh, at some town, programs yeah. with general funds could take a, a year and a half right. to right. get started. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I could I could come up with an idea now with a revolving fund. I can come up with an idea now and get us started by December. And that's pretty well explained in the document in, in the opinion of the attorney for the municipal association. It talks about that as being, I guess, a useful financial and management tools so that there is some flexibility within recreation departments. May I ask you a, a, a question, something you alluded to back. You said that the funds from the recreation department uh, 
are used, are, are extracted for the fee programs, but not the non-fee programs. So that, for instance, um, the senior dinner, uh, uh, or luncheon, whatever it's called, uh, the uh, concert series, th those are, people don't pay to go to those. Those are not funded by the revolving fund. Correct. Okay. So uh, this is just so I understand the budget. And so I'm going to pick on soccer because that's what I know. Uh, so in the expenditure listed for soccer, that's all equipment stuff used for soccer that year. Extra shirts, balls, and everything. That Does that number under soccer, does that include any of yours, your time? No. Okay, but then there's a, a line item for salaries. In soccer? Or, no, it's it just listed as salaries under expenditure. Oops, I lost my spot. Um, which, where are, you? are you looking at the current year? Yeah, so if you look at, well, is this yeah, yeah, any no, year, th this, you'll see it. Well, there. I don't know how it printed out for you. Yeah. Okay. So, you see, we have soccer. Here we have salaries. Right. The salaries for all um, rec revolving salaries come out of one particular line. Um, at this point, the majority of um, salaries that are there are for um, the, summer, the summer camp. So anybody who works or is going to be paid a ref, a coach, summer camp counselor uh, for a program that has a fee established to it is being paid for out of the revolving fund, and that is that line item. Yeah. But only those employees that are directly related to those programs, or is that any? To the fee charging programs. Is that right? Right. So like the summer salaries, the... Um, All the... The refs, I don't, uh, the refs are actually um, not, they're, they're like a per diem kind of thing. I don't think they're in the salary line, but they do come out of the rec revolving and they come out of soccer. Soccer, yeah. What, um, not looking at this specific, but the, the sorry, I'm going to switch gears for just a second. The general fund under rec salaries. Whose salaries get paid out of the general fund? Yours and, is it just yours? Mine, um, my assistant, and then the office assistant in the summer as well. And, and then um, the, beach, the beach attendant and the lifeguards. But those are for not just camp, but for all Donningham people. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you, your assistant, and the offices, the summer office assistant, okay. Which depending on the, um, I've been looking at trying to move toward um, online registration, which should cut down the amount of uh, time that we need for everything. Um, and should the, if, if we get that this year, we have cut the office assistant salary. Uh, we have cut that salary. Okay. Because so the, if the online registration goes through, it, I believe that we will cut the amount of time that we need. Okay. So you're, you're finding your way to one of the, one of the root questions here that the selectmen have given you, which is with, what methodology should we use to determine which revenues and expenses go to which place? Um, your questions about soccer are that that is the crux of this in a lot of ways because you can find all kinds of costs that apply to soccer that don't get charged to that line and that's not necessarily a bad thing um, but we need some methodology about how to determine what those things are and um, what's the methodology being used currently you said you've, there's a whole bunch of things that aren't being charged to this they're being charged to the general fund what what is making that decision at this point which goes where the it's pretty much the operating budget process dictates that it kind of the, the the answer to that question kind of falls out of the operating budget whatever gets approved in the operating budget gets paid for in the operating budget and everything else comes out of rec revolving and 
you have, in can, a way. Can you give me an example uh, of what one of those items might be? Uh, well, soccer balls is a, you know, it, it wouldn't be proposed in the operating budget. It's a, it's a clearly identifiable cost of a, a fee-based program. So, so that would, would come you know, out of the revolving fund. Yeah. Can you yeah. give me an example of what would come out of the general fund? Uh, all the indirect costs. Um, Mowing the lawn. Mow, okay. Mowing the lawn. Right, yeah. Okay. All, the, all, the facility over, all the facility overhead. Yeah, lining no, lining no, the lining field comes out of rec revolve. Okay. So yeah, but that's general uh, land maintenance would be considered so mowing yeah, or management insurance. Um, okay. You know, kind of they're typically the broader. Yeah. You know, that are not specific to not, that program at that day. Right. Exactly. Yeah, because that could be you know, well, it's on the baseball line, it's on the football line, it's on the right the town general maintenance line. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. But I'm assuming that's because that's all used common area. That's because you can't you more, can't pin more that than down to one specific program. Yeah. Right, and the town has made a decision that those are something that they want to spend money on. They want to have the capability to do that, and they do that through the operating budget. The, the flip side of it is the person paying for soccer, the person paying that fee, um, you know, we, the other thing that we need to get to here is to make sure that they're paying an appropriate amount. They're not paying too little, they're not paying too much. And um, if they're not paying enough, then they aren't paying for the cost of the program that only they benefit from. If they're paying too much, they're paying a tax. Okay, so, so well, I, we're not here. We're not here for that purpose at this point in time. I don't think you need to get down into which which paint lines get put on which you know which programs. We, but we, the, we are not going uh, to do that. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what the selectmen are asking for when they say what methodology should be used to determine what goes where. Well, what Janet, types of costs? Janet has yeah. just given us a methodology that is used. She sends a memo. It's a huh? You mean she sends a memo? At, they get approved. You talk about it like a, no, no, a dollar volume. It goes the fee programs are supported out of the rec revolving fund and those that are free to to the user are come out of the general budget. That is a methodology for determining that. I'm not saying that we all have to agree with that, but that's the way it is at the present time, I believe, right? right. I have well, a for example, last year we had a lot of um, discussion about the revolving fund and the general fund and the fee-based programs and one of the fee-based programs that was in the general fund was the swim program. The history of the swim program was, was that it was free. It was supported by the taxpayers. Um, somewhere around the time when I came in, in 1999, maybe 1998, 97, um, the Red Cross um, instituted a, fa a, a fee a couple dollars to in order to get the card from Red Cross. So rather than going and, and absorbing that cost <coughs> as part of the general fund, um, I'm assuming the former director, I know that the fee was in place when I came in. They instituted a $5 fee to offset the cost of what it was going to cost to get that, that from the Red Cross. So for years, that swim program, even though it was a fee, there was a fee for that program, it was in the general fund. Because that fee would have had to be 80 some odd dollars in order to cover the cost. So um, somewhere along the line in 2000, 2001, um, the former director said, you know what, I think that we could probably raise that fee to $10. and." They raised the fee to ten dollars, and still that program continued in the general fund. It was a weird thing. Continued that way until this past year, when we decided to move it to the revolving fund. Um, but it, um, we we raised the fee to twenty five dollars. I still have yet to see any kind of documentation yet to figure out whether or not. It came over anywhere close to breaking even or where it came out revenue dollar wise but um, so that was a program that was moved from the general fund was a fee-based program um, that was in the general fund that we tried to clean up by moving it to the revolving fund 
When, and when did you say that happened? Last year. Last year. Janet, you, this is the you first spoke budget. about your coming on board in 1999 and also coming on board in 2004. And for those that don't know the history, 2005, you were the assistant for those first years, and then you became the director, if you will. Okay. Um, if we start looking at, um, we'll pick on soccer still, soccer, and say, okay, you know, soccer costs us this much money and we need this many kids and this much money is brought in and you know now all the associate costs uniforms and stuff. stuff gets charged to that program is that going would that be a janet accounting for all of that stuff inputting all of that stuff and managing that process or would that be Betsy doing that through the general bookkeeping software and whatever with Janet feeding her the things that need to go to each individual spot yeah Jan um, Janet will give an invoice to bookkeeping that says pay this from this account soccer Okay, so that means Betsy would be setting up a whole bunch of additional... No, those are there now. That's, that's the, the expense thing that you have is, is our, from our bookkeeping system, and it, it has an account for each of those programs okay. within... All right, so that part's already set up. Yeah. Okay. In, in the interest of completing our first meeting here, I'm going to ask a question of Janet. Can, for next meeting, whenever that might be, can you pick a program, let's say soccer. <laughs> <laughs> you started it. <laughs> and it's, and it's fine. Um, and provide us the, I don't want to say budgeting, but, but the, the process you go through to identify the costs and the charges associated with soccer program. And I'm sure there's a bunch of soccer programs, so I'm not real sure what to pick. But if you could pick one, is that something you could give us at the next meeting so we have an idea of how that goes across to the selectmen and, and then the charges and the, the fees associated with it that come in? And, and As in the revenue and the expenditures that we do for, like, say, soccer. Yeah. The in, if I, yes, I can. Okay. And how I would do that is that I, we have a, um, we have a software in our office, and we input each individual thing, and we have a big description on what it is, so we know exactly what it is. Okay. The bill goes to Betsy. Betsy will print out something. I don't know if we have one, but Betsy will print out something for me, expenditures, and it won't have as much detail, detail. on it. But right. I can go back and look at it, say $215.75 was the soccer balls that we bought for here. Okay. So, I'm yes. Look, I'm looking for the detail. Primarily because um, Chris identified things that um, uh, what well, I don't want to say questionable, but things that are not necessarily attributable to the soccer program, but might be attributable to multiple programs, also including something that might be going out on out here that was town related, like like the playground people use it. You know that type of thing. concerts here. Is what, is it, I mean, well, I don't know that's this another is. thing that I kind of want to get into is the senior dinner to me, the luncheon thing to me does not s seem as if it's a recreation thing, and I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I just don't see it as that. The concert series to me does not appear to be recreation. It seems to be more welfare, but what welfare? Welfare of the community resident <laughs> not, isn't that right not the other type of welfare well I guess it all depends on what your definition of wreck is well that's that's kind of what I want to get into because that I think is going to help define us which 
which programs are fee based and and not fee based. So uh, I don't want to discuss that now, but that is something we can get at at the next meeting, Jen. Jen. Can, can we maybe set that next meeting now? No, no, that's, that's, what, there. that's what I'm trying to get to. Okay. <laughs> can I ask you a question? This um, expenditures and revenues that is for current year, and then it says 2014 as well, are these the only fee-based programs that you collected revenues and had expenditures for? Um, my very cautious answer there would be yes. Okay. Um, if you look there, there's miscellaneous programs. Okay. So that includes anything that is not big enough or has not been established long enough. Is that something else that we can add into next meeting is a list of what those miscellaneous programs are? This, mm, did you get this big yeah. legal size spreadsheet in your file? This is, this is from your program stats thing, Janet, that uh, yeah, it I, I looks kind of familiar. This, oh, yeah. this has a column called fees, and it's that okay. may be what you're looking for. It's a list of everything that we do. Perfect. Look and at that. Which of those th things for which there is a fee? Ask for it, and it shall be given. Uh, I didn't get it, that. We, we should give Jan one more chance to look at it, just to make sure we got all the X's on it. Like, okay. That's the gist of it. Perfect. Um, did okay. <laughs> I didn't want to get into this now, but. But this is a list of all the stuff that Janet does. So, and then down all the recreation that a, does. Oh, I do have it. I'm sorry. And then down the, the, the far right hand side, if it has. Because <laughs> <that's not on laughs> okay. some of these wouldn't like the the flu shot clinic has a fee base to it, but it's not in the rec fund. It so, doesn't. Yeah, this it wouldn't come out of the revolver. That's not recreation to me either. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> Well, no, I, that would I, okay, I agree with you on that. That would be health and welfare. But, but that's, you know, morale, the welfare, you know. Again, that. there's been some question along the 15 years that I've been here whether it should be called the recreation department or should we call it a different yeah. name. So that's a whole some other of, ball game. Some of this seems to um, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as the flu shots are concerned, Somebody probably went to the recreation director and said, we're going to have flu shots, could you coordinate this? Usually it comes to the town, minute, town office and they say, this and is a great idea. Who can we get to do this? Janet will do it. Okay. And I know <laughs> as far as the concert series is concerned, that was begun by the recreation director 15 years ago. More than that. I don't know. Uh, uh, and, and that was... Uh, that's not okay. a bad thing, but this is where a lot of this gets clouded, and and that's what uh, I want to. That's I why I want to try and stop. Understand what you're saying, but, but not tonight. But there's stuff. But there's there's stuff that has evolved over the years, and you know we keep talking about this. That, um, if you will, in the course of conversation, you know, rec director, could you handle the scheduling of this? And so it becomes rec director's job if you will. I'm surprised you never got the staff Christmas party. <laughs> she will now that you mentioned it. Good I job. I wouldn't say that's not true. But anyway, when would we like to meet next? Next Thursday. Same there, time. Is there any way to do it before 7 o'clock? Uh, there is if you don't want me here. <laughs> yes. <that would. laughs> So you'll pardon me if I nod off in the middle of the meeting. <laughs> well, I, I hope they don't. I have the same kind. I, until six thirty, usually we have practice, and it's going to get later if if we don't have daylight. Or no, I guess it gets earlier. It gets early. <laughs> I was going to say, what kind of so, practice? Is <laughs> <laughs> right. Thursdays Thursdays work fine for me. At seven o five. It's fine with me. Okay. I assume I will be back. I have a driver's training all day long. October 8th. I believe I will be back. It will right. be a long well, day. Well, I think you've been very helpful. But if you can't make it um, and you can get me that uh, stuff thing, that would be good. And just one last question. So salaries is really sh is, is related to camp? Yes. 
I mean, there's no salaries that are associated with different programs. No, but if I hire somebody for Nottingham Day, for example, that salary would come out of the rec revolving salary line. Okay. So, is for the general most part, yes, it's primarily camp. When you say hire somebody, a uh, musician? Is that no, what? musician will come out of the Nottingham yeah, Day. But line. if you if you hire somebody to help you, Nottingham Day has been run by volunteers for years. The yeah. last two years, it has been incredibly ridiculously understaffed, difficult. Yeah. So um, this year, I actually tried to hire somebody to bring them in, and that we didn't end up getting that person to come. And whether or not that would have I'm assuming we would have done that out of the general, I mean, out of the revolving fund, um, but they were would have been working on three different programs. So then the question is, mm -hmm. hire them. You know, that's where it kind of gets murky on what to do. If the person that I bring where's in, the, specifically, if, if the person I'm bringing in specifically is going to work Nottingham Day itself, then yes, it would come out of the revolving fund without a question. But if they're coming in to work in the office and working on three different programs, which is what happened the couple of days before Nottingham Day, we got slammed with three different things together, and I had to come in on Sunday to work because. What three different things, and were some of them general fund things and some of them revolving fund things? Um, one was the theater project, which is a separate fund. It's not the general fund. It's not the revolving fund. It's a separate fund. Okay. And um, the other two were soccer and Nottingham Day, which are both revolving funds. Okay. And it's most of the surplus. It looks like it comes from camp each year. Camp is and that... soccer and martial arts but, um, is like kind of what? 10000 from... Roughly ten thousand from camp. I'm not looking at 2, that. Two thousand from soccer. One thousand. I'm just rough at uh, numbers. I had thirty-five, but then yeah, salaries deducted. Right. Most of it is um, camp. But like this figure for camp does not include the salaries. Yeah. So the figure from camp needs salaries deducted from it. Okay. Janet, do you think that all of the fee-based programs that you currently run could be paid for by the fees that are collected every year through those programs? Say that again. So all of the programs that you run that are fee-based, do you bring in enough or more than it would be required to run those programs? I think the answer to that is yes. Okay. At least that's always the goal. Well, it all that, depends on what expenses you apply to the program. Right. That's and I mean, as like, it stands a, currently. That's a huge wild card. Right, so. right, right. Right. And I mean, a lot of the expenditures and it, it, if I know that st there's been a major change in how we're doing business or how we're doing things, I will be very conservative the very first year that we do it. Um, and, or it's the first year I'm running a program, I will be very conservative cost uh, on what I expend and how much money I expend until I know whether or not, you know, we have any leeway in, mm -hmm. in how much money we've brought in. Um, so, um, but you're establishing a fee before you actually know how many people are going to be partaking right. in that right. service or that, that opportunity. Right. And so if a lot of people show the capability for um, profit, profit exists. If nobody shows, um, hopefully you didn't expend the money yet and, and, it, and it goes away. Um, there are some programs, as you said, that there are people in town that like and, and participate in, even though they lose, they may lose, 
um, some sums of, of funds. So either week to week or even on a year basis, if it you know yeah. if it's close, it's not. But the point is, if if a program isn't working, it, you we eliminate it. Eliminate it, or we start charge out. less, and maybe more people come, and so forth and so on. But the fee that's established at the beginning is it's based on your thoughts and feelings as to how many people are going to attend um, at that particular fee. And mostly whether or not attend. it's affordable to be able to do it. Like, what are other towns charging? Right. If if somebody lives on the border with Raymond and Raymond's charging, you know, thirty dollars for exactly the same thing that we're charging forty five for, they're not coming to Nottingham. They're going to go to Raymond. So there's you, know, you kind of have the to same look at the, how much money you think you can get for a particular program and what other towns around us are charging. Right. Like but Zumba it does, was charge we were charging about the same as Raymond um, and Deerfield, and we had I don't know something like forty people started Zumba, and then two and a half three years later we had ten people, and it wasn't worth the instructor coming up here to for just ten people. Right. So we eliminated the program. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. What new programs have you tried in the last year or two? Haven't been able to. Too much, too much change going on, and oh. too much. No, you did indoor soccer. You did indoor soccer, and you organized indoor for soccer for the first. Well, we had done that before. We had done some um, team stuff. Yeah. Several years ago. Yep. I'm sorry, you stopped mid sentence. What has stopped you from starting new programs in the last few years? When, when I. I tend to get more conservative when I um, am not sure whether things are going to fly and um, there's been a lot of change around here in the last year and a half and that takes some, that takes a lot of energy to try to, it takes a lot of energy. Okay. So uh, no, there have not been very many new things. Well, my experience with indoor soccer was you was very conservative as far as saying, okay, how much is it going to cost? When do you have to pay that? And how many players should we expect? And part of what I mean by being conservative is we didn't have to pay for the league fees until after we actually had players signed up and paid. Great. We did start yoga and balanced eating last year or the year before? Last year, I think. But that, you know, I'm not going to offer a program of yoga where there's a lot of yoga studios around and there's actually yoga being offered at, or there was yoga being offered at the library. But the person that came to me said, um, do a lot of talking about eating and how that affects in the whole circle with eating and yoga. And um, so that's why I took that program on and took that instructor because I thought that was a different approach to. Uh, something different that um, the studios around weren't offering. Mm. The other thing I think too, because um, I mentioned yoga to, to Janet earlier, um, I've been going to yoga in in Raymond um, for the past couple of years because it's affordable. It's six weeks for thirty five dollars. You go to a drop in yoga program class and you can pay eighteen bucks class. So if you do something in a, in a rec department, a group, and you get a core group of people, you know, that go on a regular basis, um, I mentioned it to Jana because the guy that does it in Raymond is um, no longer going to be doing it. And we have about 12 regular Nottingham residents that were going there who are now looking for a place that don't want to pay 18 to $20 a class. So, you know, that was, you know, kind of, Rec run programs can can do those kinds of things, and that's the same thing with the martial arts program that we have. It's affordable for people that probably wouldn't be able to afford to go to a martial arts studio because the martial arts studios are more. Mm. Well, and that is because we're doing it in a building, and we're not, you know, basically attributing building fees necessarily and other heat costs and lighting costs and other things like that to that particular program 
they're in the gym here, which is being heated. <laughs> you know, so. You guys ready? <laughs> to leave? <laughs> Did you decide on you wanna, October 8th? Yes. yes. You want a motion? At 7.05. That would help. Okay. If that's what I you want to do. I, I mean, I you guys are into it. it so. I move for adjournment. I'll There's, second. All right. Who seconded it? I did. Brian. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So Janet has homework for next meeting, do we? No. We're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> you notice how quickly I did that. <laughs> yes, I did. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss something. You know, not off at some point. <laughs> no, the only the only thing I mentioned earlier was um, uh, background information. Oh, right. So like Bill's thing. And right. I'm going to see what I can find from the. Um,